And here we are with our next episode, of which we'll now begin to round out the rest of the main characters within the show in numerical order. Edward, the oldest engine in the shed, labeled with the number two on his tender, is feeling down. The rest of the engines, led by Gordon, keep bragging about how much better they are than him. The driver won't choose you again, said Gordon. He wants strong engines like us. Jeez, Gordon, way to put a guy down. Edward's not even the smallest engine in Tidmouth's sheds. <coughs> Thomas! To his surprise, though, Edward's driver and fireman offer to take him out. Without hesitation, Edward obliges. And Edward puffed away. The other engines were very cross at being left behind. How could the other engines be cross for being left behind? Is today a slow day on Sodor that no work has to be done? I guess it's a weekend. Shh, don't tell Edward that. Ah, here's the theme for Edward, another brilliant composition. Gentle and sincere is how I would describe it. After being out, Edward returns and tells the others he's going out again. Notice the rest of them moved to different berths within the shed? So much for being left behind. They plainly moved out and did something. Clearly, Thomas still thinks very selfishly, because it's obvious as all get out that he has no interest in what Edward has to say. I just realized how ungrateful Thomas seems to be at this point. As expected, nobody's attitude changed overnight. Gordon was still rubbing it in Edward's face. You watch me, little Edward, as I rush through with the express. That will be a splendid sight for you. Goodbye, little Edward. It's apparent that he doesn't care that much now, though, which is good. The best way to battle through a struggle is to stay upbeat. This time, Edward's activity was shunting freight cars, a common activity that will end up becoming one of the biggest accident-driven and costly practices in all of Sodor. Edward likes shunting. It was fun playing with trucks. He would come up quietly and give them a push. Oh, they cried, whatever is happening. These trucks are so mundane compared to their future counterparts. Just wait. Also, the way the eyes are designed will remain like that for a short period before they get more expressive ones and specific personalities that they are so infamously known for. Later in the day, Edward notices Gordon passing by, looking infuriated, only to discover that it was Gordon pulling a freight train instead of his oh-so-ever-important express. A good train! A good train! A good train, he grumbled. The shame of it. The shame of it. Oh, the shame of it. Yes, shame on you, Gordon, for being a nudge. Not long after, Edward is requested as a back engine to help Gordon up a steep hill. Upon getting there, Gordon was being scolded for being such a wuss. You're not trying. I can't do it, said Gordon. The noisy trucks hold an engine back so. By the way, check out that view. Such a pretty picture. I like how you can see the edge of the island. I think it gives the audience somewhat of a better understanding of where geographically all this takes place. Reluctantly, Gordon reverses back to the bottom, while Edward buffers up. I'm ready, said Edward. No good, grumbled Gordon. They pulled and pushed as hard as they could. Another tune, noteworthy of a mention, is that creeping theme, used for various stressful moments. These kinds of motifs are so significant to this series. Yet again, we have another grand view of this hillside setting. I would so love to be there in real life. Finally, the two reach the top, and Gordon instantaneously switches gears, physically and mentally. I've done it, I've done it, I've done it, he said proudly. He forgot all about Edward and didn't wait to say thank you. You are an oaf, Gordon. As much as you had the right to teach Thomas a lesson in the last story, you are so ignorant. Long after Gordon had sped away from Edward without even acknowledging his help, Edward rolls onto a siding and takes a break. Man, Edward deserves way more respect than this. Thankfully, his driver and fireman think otherwise. I'll get out my paint tomorrow and give you a beautiful coat of blue with red stripes. Then you'll be the smartest engine in the shed. And that's it for episode two. What's good about this episode is that although the show is titled Thomas and Friends, 
Thomas only has a visual cameo this time. He doesn't even have speaking lines. I still find it shocking that Thomas was just about as disgruntled as the rest of the engine when it came to Edward going out. So self-centered. For Edward's first introduction into the series, it was vivid from the start that Edward is an engine who takes pride in his work and looks to do his best no matter what others say. It's also interesting to see another side of Gordon. In the previous video, we saw how much Gordon was picked on, but we never saw how he interacted with the others. Here, we see he's not perfect either. He too is an engine with flaws that need to be addressed. We also get our first look at humans on the show. Although from scene to scene, the scale and detail of these characters change, fans get a chance to see engines having operators and don't just spontaneously move themselves. And although the human characters do not receive as much attention, Give these two guys a medal for being so awesome. These are the only two literal figures who show any sort of common decency towards Edward. I know I would be super happy if my boss gave me a gift for attempting to try something. Can't knock him for that. Next episode is the sad story of Henry. Thanks for watching.